Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about our beautiful neighbor Mars. Because once again we were able to discover something that might be hinting that there is something unusual going on here, specifically potentially bacterial life. What I'm talking about of course is the recent announcement that NASA was able to confirm that they've detected methane on the surface of this planet. Now let's discuss exactly what they found and how they found it, but also specifically what it may mean to the exploration of this planet and to potentially discover new life here. Welcome to What The Math. So this beautiful planet um, is, of course, currently uh, is seen as potentially dead. We know that once upon a time it had water, we know that it also had atmosphere, it had a lot of um, very hospitable conditions to life. But then it kind of slowly dried out and basically turned into this. Right now it's not very hospitable, it has a lot of radiation on the surface, it's dry and it's just overall not very pleasant. But nevertheless though, um, the paper that you see on the screen and also can find it in the description below specifies that we discovered methane and that's kind of exciting. Now there's really one main reason why it's exciting. On our planet if you look at all of the sources of methane without doubt pretty much almost all of them relate to some sort of life or life related activities or bacteria or something that's usually known as biotic. In other words, it's produced or relevant to life. In other words, inorganic production of methane is extremely rare. But um, that, of course, doesn't mean that we've certainly detected life on Mars. Because there is still at least a few sources that you can actually find on our planet that produce methane um, inorganically or abiotically. There's actually at least one recent paper that you can also find in the description below that specifically talks about that abiotic methane production in various geological um, locations, specifically in different types of rock mixed with water where methane is also produced. Now, we're not entirely certain yet what exactly makes it happen, but we know that you don't really necessarily need to have actual life to produce methane. So in other words, even though we've detected methane coming off something on Mars, it's not 100% certain that it's life related. Now, where exactly was it located? And how was it detected, of course? I think most of you still remember what this is. This is the Curiosity rover that NASA unfortunately lost only a few months ago from when I'm making this video. But this beautiful device was able to detect uh, methane signs back in 2013, specifically June 16th of 2013. Although we initially thought that maybe it's just a malfunctioning um, detector or possibly something else that we're seeing as methane, so it was never confirmed. But very recently, the scientists looked at the data from the Mars Express probe that's orbiting around Mars, and they were able to confirm that specifically on that date, in the region where uh, Curiosity was located, there was actually a cloud of methane that was also detected by this probe here. And specifically, it was not a lot of uh, methane, it was only like in parts per billion, so it's actually very insignificant, but it was nevertheless there. In the location right here near the Gale Crater, um, and it's actually a place known as Eolis Mense, although we have no way of verifying this right now because there's nothing uh, near there. If you were to actually look at Mars and try to locate this region, um, it's essentially somewhere it's somewhere right here it's this part of mars that has these unusual formations um, that may have created methane either geologically or hopefully as most scientists hope right now this was actually maybe the first detection of some kind of an underground life and this confirmation of course gives us a huge reason to go to mars maybe not even to find life we now can actually use this um, as a potential landing spot in case we first of all need water, because if it's not life, then there's definitely liquid water there that we can extract somehow. And at the same time, because there's methane, we can use it for energy. So that way we wouldn't have to bring as many solar panels or maybe even create some kind of a methane extractor that will allow us to create fuel for rockets. So there's a lot of um, really useful reasons for 
why this discovery was actually quite amazing. And at the same time, we've also known for quite a while now that uh, there's a lot of methane emissions that are seasonal from an object known as Titan, which is the moon of Saturn. Um, as you can see, a relatively large moon of Saturn, almost as big as Mars. And we've detected methane here as well. But here it could be from several sources. So whatever is happening on Titan might be happening on Mars and vice versa. So we do need to create a mission hopefully soon and um, hopefully the mission that will investigate the area where methane was discovered. I think it's somewhere right here. In order for us to establish if this is actually biotic or abiotic or basically life or not life related, we do need to start looking for patterns now. If we can actually find a seasonal pattern where this is kind of repeating every once in a while and seems to be almost like something growing and subsiding, growing and subsiding, it does have a potential to be life. But if this is a one-off event, if this doesn't really happen as often or um, is somehow related to underground activity, we'll only probably see this if it correlates with some kind of a geological activity, like for example, an earthquake or just some kind of a ground motion. While of course, at the same time, if we detect some other unusual molecule that doesn't seem to uh, exist outside of life-related activities, this will give us a lot more reasons to believe that this is a life-related. So like for example, discovering some kind of an organic molecule in the same region. So we do need to start looking at this particular location in a little bit more detail, but like I said, a mission there would be probably much more interesting. But this of course creates a few questions as well. For example, why haven't we actually seen this happen again in the last few years since the original detection? It's possible that we just haven't really been looking careful enough because this, like I said, is a very, very small uh, part in billion um, detection meaning that we do have to have a much more accurate uh, detection. However, um, if this is something that happens regularly, I think we should be able to see it again, and why haven't we? And if this is a seasonal occurrence, so why exactly did it happen specifically on June 16th of 2013, and will it happen again sometime around June of another year? So we do need to take a look at it again, um, hopefully this year in June, just to see if we see something similar. And one of the easiest ways of trying to see if this is biotic or abiotic is try to recreate this right here on Earth. If we could actually take um, something similar to soil on Mars and essentially try to strip it of any kind of life there and create similar conditions with just the right amount of sunlight and heat uh, striking the surface and then add a little bit of water to those rocks and see if we can actually create methane, this would be a pretty good indication of if it's abiotic or biotic, if it's life or not life. But like I mentioned before, even if it's not life, it suggests that there is liquid water underneath this region, and it also suggests that there might be actual um, source of energy that we can use for colonization of Mars. So that by itself requires us to find and pinpoint this location in a little bit more detail, so we do need to start looking. So whether it's life or not life, it's still a super exciting discovery and the fact that we were able to confirm it makes it even more exciting. So now we know that uh, Mars has a lot of deposits, we know that there's something going on there, and we know that it still has a lot of mysteries that it could one day be solved if we actually create a colony there and start studying it in a little bit more detail. So Elon Musk, get on it. We need to get there ASAP. And I know that uh, he's been working pretty hard in trying to develop a mission that actually goes on Mars, but it is a very challenging affair. As you've probably seen from another TV show that deals with it in a lot of details. There's actually a TV show called Mars, and it's an amazing show, you should definitely check it out. And on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this particular video, and in one of the future videos, we're going to talk more about Mars and actually about the missions to Mars that are going to happen in the next few years. Subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who you think might want to learn more about this beautiful planet, and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. It does help me quite a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.